Okay, so good afternoon and thank you for attending the four o'clock session of the Virtual Training Institute. So we have um, Joseph from Hartford uh, Community College and he is giving a presentation on how to use prime numbers to solve fraction problems. And just a quick reminder, at the end of the presentation, you will be given a survey and your proof of partic participation will come to you in the form of an email. Gonna, gonna first read the dis disclaimer, and that is the content or opinions expressed in this presentation do not necessarily reflect or present the views, positions, or policies of the Maryland Department of Labor nor does the mention of trade names, commercial products, or organizations imply an official endorsement by the Maryland Department of Labor. Okay, uh, go to the first slide here. Okay, um, a little bit of background. Uh, most math students have, uh, the common problem they have with fractions is finding common denominators and, and reducing reducing fractions to uh, lowest terms. Uh, typically, uh, I, there's two basic methods that uh, people teach in order to do uh, common denominators. And what I call a, the brute force, force method, which uh, basically what people do is uh, multiply the denominators together and, and that's it. Or the heuristic method, which basically what they do is they take the denominators and they keep multiplying them by, uh, in, you know, in, integer multiples until they finally get a, a, a common result and that's the common denominator. Okay, next slide. And uh, to reduce fractions, basically, uh, you know, students are taught what I call the guess and check method. And basically what that is, is typically they, you look at the num numerator and denominator and you, tr you find a number that uh, divides evenly both numerator and denominator and you do that, and then after you get the results, you go back and you see if you can find a number, another number, and you keep doing that until finally you can find a number that'll uh, divide evenly into the both numerator and denominator. Okay, next slide. Uh, however, there's, a, there's tools that, uh, that provide a rational logical methods to, to find both common denominators without having to do any of this guess and mess uh, guess and check kind of stuff. And these tools use uh, both prime number, use prime numbers and prime number factorization, which I know most of you have seen. And the method that I, uh, method I'm gonna show you uh, to find a common denominator is uh, I've called the bucket list, a bucket process. And uh, it, I got this name when I was teaching my, when I had, was teaching my daughter how to find common denominators. And I saw that she was learning the two methods that I previously discussed. And I, I tried, what I did was I, I tripped over this method and my daughter liked to, always liked to do things like pick things up and put, put them in, in, in buckets and things like that. So I thought a good way to relate to her was, okay, we're gonna pick up numbers and we will put numbers in buckets and then that's how we're gonna use to, uh, what we're gonna do in order to find a common denominator. And the tool to reduce fractions, it does, does nothing more than use, than use prime factorization in both the numerator and denominator. Okay, next slide. Oh, as you know, a prime number is a number that's, 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 uh, 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 that can only be divided by itself and one. And typically for the, ki the kinds of problems that we deal with adult, adult students, basically the only prime numbers that they need to know are the, not the prime numbers between, between, uh, between two and, and, and 20. And, uh, and as you know, those numbers are two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, and 19. And typically, because this is a new concept, uh, what I, ha I have students do is write these numbers at the, at the, top, of their at the top of their paper. So as we're, we're learning how to do, this, do, do the bucket process or and uh, prime factorization, they, they, they know what a prime number is. Okay, next slide. Okay, prime factorization, obviously, you know, is when you, when you factor a number and all the factors are a prime number. And what I, what I typically do is, is have this slide to my students to, show, to give them examples of, of, of what prime factorization is. And typically the numbers that, 
they see most often in denominators are, are 6, 8, 9, 15, 16. And I threw in the number 48 because one of the things I do, I like to like to show them the, how to do is that when they get a bigger number, how do you use the, uh, the prime number factorizations of other numbers in order to get the prime factorization of a, of a larger number? So for example, I you know, uh, for six, you know that six is three times two and three and two are, are prime numbers. So the prime factorization of, of, of six is, is three times two. Uh, prime fa uh, for eight, uh, eight is uh, four times two, two is a prime number, but four isn't. So you, you tell them, well, you got to factor, factor four into its prime factors, which is two times two and hence the, and hence the and it's the prime factorization of, of eight is two times two times two. Uh, similarly, you know, if I, you look at 16, 16, typically the, the students say that, uh, the product of 16 is four times four. And then you, I explained to him, I said, look, you know, you know that the prime factorizations of, of four are two times two. So there, you got two fours. So the prime factorization of, of, of 16 has to be two times two times two times two, which is 16. And then uh, I show them the factors, prime factorization of 48, which is six times eight. And I tell them, okay, you know what the factors, prime factorization of, of six is, it's three times two. And we know what the prime factorization of eight is. So we join the two of them together and we get the prime factorization of 48 is three times two times two times two. Okay, next slide. Okay, the bucket process, as I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, basically what you do is you take you take the denominators, and what you do is you you you, or, you arrange them uh, from the largest to the smallest, start, starting from left to right. Okay, you really don't have to do this, but in reality, but I do this for the students because it, it adds some structure to to what they're doing. Then what you do is you factor each each denominator into its prime numbers and you put the, the prime the prime fa prime factors underneath each of the denominators then you start with the what you do is you start with the factor in the leftmost denominator and you put that factor in a bucket and then you go back and you check to see if it is a factor in any other the denominators that that you that you have and if it is you cross it out then you go back and you put that for and you, and you cross out the denominator in the first factor then you take the second factor and you and you do the same thing. You put it in the bucket and check to see if it's a factor in any of the other ones. If it is, you cross it out. And then once you, you know, once you've gone through all the all the factors in the, for the first denominator, you go to the second one until all of them are, are accounted for in the third and fourth and fifth. And then what you do is then once you have all those factors uh, into that final bucket, you take you take all of those numbers and multiply them together, and hence you get the lowest common multiple, and hence it's a common denominator. Next slide, please. Let's look at, I'll show, this will become clear when you look at a couple examples. So let's look at the first example. The first example is consider you're, you're trying to add the two, fra the two fractions, one fifteenth and one sixth. Well, we know the prime factorizations of six and 15. Okay, the prime factors of 15 are, are three and five and the prime factors of six are three and two. Next slide, please. So what you do is we we put we we got the we got the numbers fifteen when there's the prime factors of fifteen is three and five and six and 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 for six are three and two, so you pick the first factor of fifteen is three you put it in, you put it in, you put it in the bucket then you see that three is also a factor in six so you cross that out you go back to the bucket and cross out three, then you take the next factor which is five and you put the five in the bucket cross it out, and check to see if it's in six it's not in six. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, okay, and then finally you look at the at the last factor six, and then you it's the last last com, the not, last number uh, common factor is two, so you put the last factor in the in the box, so uh, in the in the bucket, so the bucket the bucket now contains all the factors three, five, and two, so the common denominator for 15 and six is five times, is three times five times two, which is 30. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so once you, once you have that, then it, it's straightforward. You just convert, you know, you've got the common denominator and you just, uh, 
you, you just convert one sixth to thirtieths and, and fifteen to thirtieths, and that, and, and you, and you, and you get you add one sixth and one fifteenth, and is it five thirtieths and two thirtieths? You get seven thirtieths. Okay, next slide. Let's look at a more complicated one, which is typically one that a lot of students have a lot of problem with when you start adding, uh, putting three, uh, three, uh, three fractions together and have to add. And let's look at how you would do this for adding the fractions one, one sixth, one ninth, and one fifteenth. Okay. Well, we know the prime factorizations for 15 are three and five, for nine are three and three, and for 15 are, are uh, well, sorry for the mistake, uh, mistake here. It's, it should be, uh, two, two and five. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we've got three denominators. Okay, so arranging them again, like I said, you put 15, nine, and six, and you put the, the, uh, the prime factors below them, and you start with the leftmost box, and it's got, a, it's got uh, the first factor is three, so we put the three in the box. So, and then we look at the other two factors, and both of them have three, so we cross them out, and then we, uh, we go back, go back to 15, and we we take the factor five. We put it, we we put it in the we put it in the box, and then we look at the other two factors, and it doesn't have any. So, and now we're we're completely done with the uh, with the the first factor, uh, first denominator. Next slide, please. Okay, okay. Then we go to the nine. Okay, so we got the factor three. We take the three and we put it in the box and we cross it out and, and see. And we don't have any other common factor in for six. And then we go to six, and then we go to the factor six and we put the and we, we put the two in there. We cross it out and we've accounted for all the factors. And hence, what we have is the uh, the, the least common multiple for those for those three numbers is three times five times three times two, which is ninety, which is which is the <clears throat> which is the which is the least common multiple multiple for those three numbers and hence the common denominator next slide and then here just just converting all the fractions converting one six to um one six to ninetieths you get 15 ninetieths converting uh 15 you get six ninetieths and converting uh ninth uh ninth to uh, you get 10 ninetieths and then you get 15 plus six plus 10 and you get 91, 98 in order to get the solution to that problem. Next slide. Okay, typically, you know, as students go on, you know, they start to realize and they start to see some things and you start to bring it to their attention uh, when you're looking for uh, the least common multiple. And they start discovering that, oh, by the way, if, uh, if, both, no if both denominators are prime numbers, then, then the lowest, co lowest common multiple is the, fa is, the proctor, uh, is the product of two. For example, for six is three times two, and for uh, or three and two, to the common denominator is six. And also if one number is a prime number and the other is not a prime number, uh, if the prime number doesn't divide evenly into the, into the other number, then, then, basic, then basically, uh, it, you uh, you have to multiply the, the lowest common multiple is is the product of the two numbers. For, for example, two if you have a common uh, one if you're adding one half and one ninth, then the common denominator has to be eighteen. If the largest if the largest number is not a, if the largest number in your largest number in okay okay. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, if the largest number is not a prime number, and the other number, uh, okay, if the largest number is not is not a prime number, determine if any of the other numbers numbers will divide it. And if it does, then the largest number is the is the uh, is the least common multiple, and hence the uh, and hence the common denominator. If not, then you use the bucket process to determine if. Uh, determine the determine the determine the lowest common multiple and hence the the, uh, the the smallest common denominator. Okay, for example, if you have uh, eight and sixteen, because eight divides sixteen evenly, sixteen is the common common multiple. And as we as we saw before, if we're we're doing if we're doing six and uh, we have a denominator six and fifteen, then then you use the bucket process that I described and we saw previously. And and because six doesn't divide. Uh, divide 15 evenly. However, one of the one of the interesting things is is that uh, sometimes you you can have denominators that you're not sure whether you whether you uh, 
whether you you can uh, whether they really have a common multiple or not. And sometimes you, and what you do is if you do the prime factorization, then it'll show you readily that uh, uh, it doesn't have any any common factors, and hence the the lowest common multiple is the fa is the product of two. For example, uh, if you have if you're adding one eighth and one fifteenth. You look at the prime factors; they're two, two, and two, and, and for fifteen is five and three. There's no common, there's no common factors, and hence the only the lowest common multiple is the product of the two. Next fact, next slide, please. Okay, uh, for to reduce uh, to reduce uh, uh, reduce fractions to lowest terms, typically after you do an operation, typically you're going to end up with uh, either a mixed number or or some or the, or a, a fraction that'll be a proper fraction. And typically what I, you know, I, I go back and I say, okay, let's use our, uh, our concepts of prime numbers. So if we look at the denominator, the denominator is a prime number, then the fraction can't be reduced. And I explained that to them. Uh, if the numerator is a prime number, then determine if the numerator can divide the denominator evenly. If it cannot, then it's in its lowest terms, okay? If the numerator and denominator are not prime numbers, factor each until all the, all the factors are prime numbers. And if there's no prime fact, if there's no prime prime factors, just like I showed you, uh, we talked before, if you have the number uh, a fraction of eight fifteenths, then you know that uh, then that it's in its lowest terms. Uh, if common, if you know, if you've got, uh, you know, if there are com, if, you know, what you do that it, it, it is you just take take the numerator and denominator, uh, factor them to to they all to they all uh, to all the all the factors are are prime numbers. And then you look, then you cancel out uh, the common factors, and then multiply multiply the factor the the remaining factors together, and you'll get the and you'll get a uh, a fraction in the lowest terms. Next slide, please. Okay, for example, if you're trying to reduce the fraction, you know, 12, 12 48ths. Okay, I, here twelve forty-eighths. Okay, I got another typo here. Uh, the factors for twelve. Uh, 12 are, are four and three for 48 it should be six, four and two. Then your prime fat prime factor prime factors of four are, are, are two, two and three. And then you, you still got six and four in the denominator. And then finally you can fact all the prime factors become two, two and three and three, two, two, two and two. And then what you can do is you then, then you just, you know, factor out all the common terms and and you multiply multiply to multiply things across and you and you get the low uh, the number the lowest the low, low uh, the reduced to common term is uh, is equal to one fourth. Okay, last slide. That's all that's all I have. Uh, thanks for attending and I apologize for all the technical difficulties they're all due to me and, and not not Ramon and I apologize for that. Any questions? Questions with anybody? Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions. Um, somebody asked if they could get a copy of the PowerPoint. Um, the PowerPoint presentation will be made available. At some point, just give us a little bit of time to get all that information up because um, we're still working out some logistics for how that's going to work. So, again, just be a little bit patient um, with us. Um, we have one question. Do your students eventually do this quickly? Matter, matter of fact, yes. Matter of fact, uh, I, yesterday, I, matter of fact, yesterday, I had a student. Um, come to me yesterday and I presented this in class and typically in class you know uh we went to her quick and she wanted to really do a quick and basically you know I taught it to my my fifth grader and they picked she picked up on it really quick and uh once they see it you know it, it and uh they typically do and, you know the biggest thing that you got to do is you they need to do it's no different than anything else uh 
you got to give them some practice, give them some examples to practice with. And once they're practicing it comfortable with it, they can get pretty quick. Matter of fact, in less than an hour yesterday, in less than a, I would say probably a half hour with my student yesterday, she, she was doing exceptionally well with it. Okay, great. Thank you. So somebody is asking if, so Laura, if you could go back to the last slide, um, somebody would like to see that. Okay. Go ahead. Hopefully that takes care of it. I'm so, I apologize for the typos on it. So is there anything else? Okay, we have some thanks. Good, hopefully it was useful. And I apologize. I apologize okay. for all the technical difficulties. Sorry, Ram Sorry Ramona. Well, that's, you know, that's part of what happens when you're in a virtual environment. Um, you know, we just we make the best of it. More, I'll practice more to get more adept at it. <laughs> so thank you to Laura Ostrowski, who um, was able to get in and to advance the slide. So thank you, Laura. Thank and you, Laura. I want <laughs> my thanks too. Yeah. So thank you all for um, attending. And as soon as you get out, it should pop up the um, the evaluation survey. So if you can fill that out and you will get an email about the proof of participation. So thank you all and have a good rest of your evening. And hopefully you will uh, sign up and attend some other presentations. We have some great presentations within the next three days through Thursday. So please come back and join us. So thank you again. Okay, thank you, Ramona. I appreciate your help and your patience. Okay, sure. <laughs>